Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And uh, Mario had a pretty good weekend, I guess. Oh yeah. Yeah, so Mario broke all kinds of records, this despite critics dunking on the movie. Uh, this is, uh, you know, basically given the, uh, the gloved middle finger to Disney at this point. And this is post pandemic. People were pointing out in the previous Mario video when we talked about how well it was doing that this is post pandemic. They can't use the pandemic excuse anymore and be like, well, the reason our movie didn't do good is people still don't feel no. comfortable going out. They're going to use it to this. Well, that one did well because it was post pandemic and ours was pandemic. So that's why it beat it. That's what they're going to do. They're yeah. going to use this excuse totally. Well, it beat, it beat uh, Frozen 2's opening, I think. Um, it's beaten a lot of records that were years old. And we're going to talk about that. Uh, it's just complete domination. Well, my, my sister was going to take my nephew and she kept trying to get seats in every place to sold out. Yeah. Yeah, um, we had we had trouble getting seats. I know, and then we didn't get to go because I got go. sick. I'm still mad about it. I know, I know. Well, let's talk about it. Uh, I think there's probably going to be many more Mario movies now, whether or not they'll be good. Eh. <laughs> we'll see, but I'm sure they'll do more. So before we get to it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, we do talk about movies and video games and pop culture and everything going on at the box office. And if you subscribe, you'll get a woohoo from Geeky. Woohoo! And uh, yeah, so this is coming from Variety, Super Mario Brothers movie box office, all the records smashed on opening weekend. Uh, we got a deadline, record opening for animated pick at 377 million plus worldwide, five, five, day, five day US record. Um, and we'll talk about some of these records that were broken. So if you go all the way down here, here we go. Here are the, here are the records that were broken okay. by Mario. I'm waiting. Highest grossing debut of 2023. Well, it's this not is hard. Domestic. Domestic. Okay. Uh, surpassing Ant Man and the Wasp at 106. So it's almost twice, like twice More, what Ant Man did. But Ant Man was a huge disappointment. So biggest five day. Of course, they always. I'm waiting for the the biggest 14 day record, the biggest 21 day record, biggest five day opening of all time, overtaking Revenge of the Fallen at 200 million. So that's interesting. The stat specifically uh, is specifically for movies that open on a Wednesday. It's nowhere near the biggest open. Yeah, because I was gonna say Endgame and Spider Man. Right, right. They were massive. Highest grossing debut for Illumination, beating 2015 again pre pandemic Minions and three day opening weekend of 115 million. Second biggest debut ever for an animated movie, outpacing 2016's Finding Dory and its three-day opening weekend of 135.1 million and following Incredibles 2 and its three-day debut of 183 million. So again, these are these are two Disney movies, Disney Pixar movies. They were massive, massive hits that got beat by Mario mm -hmm. and they were pre-pandemic. Okay, let that sink in. Yeah, that's of course, true. there's inflation too. There is inflation too, but pretty much like everybody's going to see Mario if they can get tickets. Highest grossing debut for a video game, outranking 2022's Sonic 2 at 72.1 million. Uh, international record. Biggest opening of 2023 ahead of Ant-Man and the Wasp. Again, doesn't take much. It doesn't take much. Second, it was second, did not overtake Frozen. Second biggest animated opening of all time behind Frozen 2. Biggest illumination opening of all time. Biggest video game opening of all time. Uh, global, biggest opening of 2023. Highest Illumination opening, you get it. Biggest video game opening, highest animated opening weekend ever for IMAX on a Tuesday <laughs> between <laughs> 3 and 6 p.m. when it's raining. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So, but look, it just made, it made a lot of money, guys. It made a lot of money. And um, this does not bode well for Disney because, again, we've talked about how, you know, Universal is going to overtake them all the way around. We've got, actually got people commenting on older videos where we predicted that Universal was going to trounce Disney. And the next big thing in the theme parks is Mario, is Nintendo. Yes. And this is the beginning of like the Nintendo cinematic universe or whatever. And this might be the next big thing in general because it seems like the MCU is in decline. Star Wars is in decline. All these Disney franchises, Pixar has been relegated to... Uh, you know, direct to streaming, and here comes here comes Universal. Mm -hmm. Illumination, yeah, yeah. And um, I, look, the writing's been on the wall for years. You know, Disney. I mean, a lot of people have taken issue with how Disney's handled animation. Well, as soon as people found out that, well, not just animation, but as soon as they found out Universal was getting uh, Super Nintendo uh, at the parks, 
there was people knew they were in trouble. And then, you know, now they're doing a film and going up and and the, the decline of Disney animation has been meteoric because they, they were like the innovators. And now that they, they, they can't, you know, uh, assimilate and then appropriate something, they don't do it. Yeah. The only movies of theirs that, that seem to do well now are sequels. Yeah. But at least at least Strange World was something new. Yeah. But it, it but it, but instead of doing something new that's good, <laughs> it's Strange World. Uh, yeah, but I'm I'm just saying like the, Disney, you can tell like they experiment, and if if the movie doesn't do well like Pixar, they'll be like, okay, let's try this one. Can we sequel this one? Is it good enough for a sequel? Even like they never used to do direct sequels to Disney you know, Walt Disney Animation Studios movies in the theater. They always did the cheap quills and now they've been reduced to Wreck-It Ralph 2, Frozen 2, you know, the live action Moana. I mean, it's it's like it's the same the it same is. thing. It's the same mindset of the cheap quill cool where we can't come up with something new. We can't come up with the next big thing. So let's just do more of the stuff that made yeah. us money. And that's Disney in general. Like for all's talk, of, we were talking about it yesterday. For all's talk about Bob Iger, oh, Disney's so creative now. We're going to go back to creativity. And then and announces more immediately more. Annou- announces a live action remake of a movie that's oh. less than ten years old. And then a week after they announced that, they put a bunch of stuff. They always drop a lot of merchandise on Monday on Shop Disney. A whole bunch of Moana themed merchandise dropped today too. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's just it. I mean, Disney is basically just a freaking board cube at this point, and. Um, I don't feel bad for him. I mean, again, the writing has been on the wall for years. They got rid of John Lasseter. That did not help. I mean, granted, it takes a long time for these movies to hit the theater, but like people just aren't feeling it anymore. You know, I mean, it's, it's not hard. It's really not hard to make money at the box office. Even look at Minions. Minions was not a fantastic movie. Gru was not a fantastic movie, but it was a crowd pleaser and people went to go see it because they wanted a Minions movie and they got a Minions movie. It didn't subvert their expectations mm-hmm. and be like, hey, let's sideline the Minions in the first 10 minutes of the movie yes. and have it be about all these other characters or whatever. It's like it's it's really not hard. Trolls, you know, Trolls. This is a Trolls movie. It's about Trolls. Um, so they seem to get it. And Disney is just trying too hard to... Well, they're not trying hard enough. Actually, it seems like they're trying too hard to push messaging. Yeah, and, to be honest. Okay. And, and uh, you know, tell the audience. Disney wants to tell the audience what they should like rather than reacting to what the audience is telling them they want. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's for any business, that is a catastrophic mistake. And you can, you can keep doing that when the money's flowing pretty free, but Disney is starting to run out of money. So, uh, I don't know. Universal's going to totally eat their lunch show. I think. And it's, it's, it's about damn time. They need some real competition. I agree. So we're going to wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, we'll talk later. Bye. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.